first time Julius Caesar became consul was in 59 BC. His year-long consulship would be filled with a lifelong of controversies that would plague him many years down the road. Why do you ask? Well, Caesar literally had his crew dump a bucket of feces on his cold consul. During the Roman Republic, there were two consuls in charge of Rome. They would be the equivalent of the President of the United States, but there were two of them. The consuls served for only one year to prevent corruption and could only rule when they agreed because each consul could veto the other one's decision. Consuls were entrusted with overseeing political elections, setting the political agenda, deciding to use or to not use their veto, reading religious omens, creating and determining holidays, controlling the military, and looking after public safety. Consuls also had a one-year term before they had to take a required 10-year hiatus from the consulship. How to become consul? To keep it simple, you had to climb the Cursus Honorum, a political tree. First, you had to be a man, patrician, or plebeian. Second, you had to be a military tribune and served in the military for at least 10 years. Be appointed by the Roman Senate for your military service. The role was to observe the legate and, if needed, fill in for him. Third was to become a quester. Be at least 30 years old and be elected by the tribal assembly. Roles were never the same for questers, but most commonly they served as an administrator in Rome or as a somewhat vice governor in one of the provinces. Lucius Cornelius Sulla created reforms to the quester position, making it a compulsory political stepping stone to become consul in 81 BC. Optional, edile. Be at least 36 years old and be elected by the plebeian consul, tribal consul, or appointed by a reigning consul. The role was administrative, looking over Rome's maintenance, organizing the games, and obtaining provisions for the public. This position was not required, but all the spending did need to come out of the Edile's own pocket. 4. Become a Praetor. Be at least 39 years old and served as a quester. The role was being a judge in the Roman courts. Praetor Peregrinus judged over foreigners, while Praetor Urbanus judged over citizens. 5. Become a consul. Be at least 42 years old and have served as a praetor and quester. To go over the roles again, consuls were in charge of elections, setting political agendas, vetoing bills, reading omens, creating holidays, control of the military, and public safety. Each stepping stone Julius Caesar took deserves its own video. To sum it up, Julius served as a military tribune in Asia then was captured by pirates, had them killed, and headed back home. Caesar helped defeat Spartacus under the command of Marcus Licinius Crassus, but Nias Pompeius Magnus received all the credit. Before Caesar could start his questorship in 69 BC, his first wife Cornelia passed away. He gave a spectacular eulogy about Cornelia's honor and her family lineage, which was unheard of for any woman of the time. This painted some targets on Caesar's back because Cornelia's father was Lucius Cornelius Cinna, and he was hated by Roman politicians. Then as a quester, he served in Hispania, where he saw a statue and began to weep. It was Alexander the Great, and at the same age of 32, Alexander established the largest empire the ancient world had ever seen. Caesar vowed to be better than Alexander. In 65 BC, Caesar became Edile. Julius took out huge loans from his old commander, Crassus, and promised to pay him back once he became proconsul. Caesar built roads, hosted games, and gave out free bread significantly more than any other Edile. This gave him loyalty, support, and most importantly, votes from the public. His display of wealth humiliated fellow Edile Marcus Calpurnius Bibulus. Caesar won the election of Pontifex Maximus in 63 BC, which was a lifelong position. Even though Pontifex Maximus was not needed to become consul, it would play a major role in Caesar's consulship. He was now the high priest of Rome and in charge of confirming religious holidays presented to him by the consuls. Before Caesar could start his praetorship in 62 BC, he divorced his second wife Pompeia for being under suspicion because a man dressed as a woman stuck into her private women's only party. Caesar headed to Hispania Ulterior and started to pay off his debts to Crassus from the loot he found. Caesar won some battles and was given the highest Roman honor, a triumph. A triumph is pretty much a military parade. For a triumph to happen, you have to be a soldier at the time of the ceremony, but an active soldier could not run for political office. Candidates also had to be in person in Rome for the election, but no active military member could step foot in Rome. Caesar filed for an absentee election so that he could run for office and have a triumph. A powerful senator named Cato was standing in his way, preventing his petition to stand for election. So Caesar had to make a choice. He decided to run for the consulship. His old friends Crassus and Poppy would make some backroom deals with Caesar. One of these deals was that Caesar would allow his only child Julia to marry Poppy. Second was the lowering of taxes for Crassus' debt collectors. In 60 BC, Gaius Julius Caesar won the consulship with the most votes. In second was former Edile and now co-consul Bibulus. On January 1st, 59 BC, their one year as consul began. 
Julius Caesar and Bibulus were from opposite political parties. Bibulus was a conservative only elected to prevent Caesar's populist agenda. Each consul had power for one month, and then the other consul would have power for the next. This system would repeat until the end of their one-year term. It just so happened that Caesar had the most amount of votes and became the lead consul first. One of the first things that Caesar did was make Senate meetings public by writing everything down and posting it in the forum. He wanted the public to see everything that was happening behind closed doors. On the other hand, Caesar was not that nice. He only did this because he wanted the public to be on his side and to see which way the senators were voting. Julius had a plan to redistribute land to the poor and the veterans of the legions. Rome was plagued by unemployment, and the populace wanted to turn these people into productive farmers. To sum up the bill, it would give married men with families or veterans land to build farms. Caesar almost immediately called for a debate for the land reform bill. Bibulus rejected the bill, but did not veto. Remember the leaders from earlier, Pompey and Crassus? They were also senators and former consuls with huge political influence. They had large armies and loyal veterans just waiting for land. They put much support behind the bill because of the backroom deals with Caesar. When it was Senator Cato's turn to talk, he hated Julius so much he started a filibuster. After some time, Caesar could not stand this and had Cato arrested. This was a crime, but as a consul, they were fully immune from the law until their consulship ended. Senators were outraged by this action and stormed out of the Senate. Caesar would let Cato go, but this just made it clear within the first days of office that Caesar was going to abuse his power and use his full legal immunity. Caesar only had until February to pass his law before Bibulus would be in charge. There was a law stating that any bill must be on public display for 24 days so that the public could digest the information before voting. Even though the bill was not approved by the Senate, Julius Caesar still posted the bill. Pompey, Crassus, and Caesar spoke highly about the land reform bill. The veterans and the public showed support. Bibulus hated this reaction. Caesar invited him to one of the public forums to speak against the bill, and the public started hurling insults his way, so Bibulus left. On voting day, before the bill could be read at the public assembly, Bibulus showed up with his conservative tribunes of the plebs. Bibulus was going to veto. When Bibulus spoke out against the bill, the people of Rome were so mad that they jumped up on stage, grabbed Bibulus, and started dumping feces on him. They began beating him and his tribunes. Caesar took this as a perfect time to call for a vote, and the land reform bill was passed. Apparently, Caesar could not hear Bibulus calling for a veto under the noise of the crowd or the excrement being dumped on him. When February came, it was Bibulus' turn as lead consul. He was quick to try to undo Caesar's land reform bill. Bibulus tried to get the senators to speak out against it, but the bill was not overturned. Senators were afraid of Caesar, so Bibulus gave up his physical seat and headed home. He would remain there for the rest of his term. Julius Caesar was now in complete control and could do almost anything that he wanted to. Even though Bibulus was hiding in his home, he still had some power. Vetoing could only be done in person, but there was a loophole. Consuls were also the religious leaders during the time, and they had a powerful law under their command. If it was a religious holiday, no one could vote. During the Republic, holidays were not on the same days every year, so it was up to the consul to choose when a holiday would happen, and Bibulus just so happened to make holidays on voting days. Bibulus spent the remainder of his consular year trying to use religious omens to declare Caesar's laws as null and void, in an attempt to bog down the political system. Instead, however, it simply gave Caesar complete autonomy to pass almost any proposal he wanted to. The loophole that Caesar used was that he was Pontifus Maximus, the highest religious rank. He could overrule Bibulus's holidays and still hold a vote. Bibulus clearly knew that this would happen and continued scheduling holidays, every time it failed. Bibulus was doing this to show the senators, the public, and the world that Caesar was not a consul, but a tyrant. What were some of the laws passed by Caesar during his one-year term as consul? To keep it simple, first was the redistribution of land to the veterans of the legions and the poor satisfying Pompey and his soldiers. Second was ratifying Pompey's conquested land in the east. Third was the lowering of taxes for Crassus' debt collectors after the Mithridatic Wars. After a consulship, a person would become a proconsul with some political power. Caesar was given Illyricum and Cisalpine Gaul as a reward by the Senate. Then the governor of Transalpine Gaul died, and Pompey pushed for Caesar to have command of that province too. Now instead of Caesar being governor for the two-year limit, they gave him an additional three years, five years in total, and four legions. Caesar then married his third wife, Calpurnia. Her father would become one of the next consuls in 58 BC. During these next five years, Julius's governorship in Gaul would be the start of total conquest for the Roman Republic. Thank you for reaching the end of this lesson. Claude's History Course teaches history buffs about important world history events. Become a Patreon and have your name listed at the end of each lesson. For more informational videos like these, subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Comment down below on which person or event you want to see covered next. 
We'll see you on another lesson soon on Claude's History Course.